So, welcome to the proteomics course. Uh, in today's lecture, we will talk about gel based proteomics. The gel based proteomics includes different type of techniques which can be used in uh, different aspects of life science research. Regardless of whatever field you work on, uh, every lab uses different type of gel based approach to separate proteins in their day to day research. So, gel based proteomics includes different type of techniques such as sodium dodelson sulphate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis or SDS page, two dimensional gel electrophoresis or 2 D E. The advanced form of two dimensional gel electrophoresis also known as difference in gel electrophoresis or DIGE. Then there are several advancement of it, variations of it such as blue native page or BN page. So, in the gel based proteomics, we will talk about different principles involved in operating each of these techniques and their applications. For example, the SDS page can be used to separate proteins based on their molecular weight. The two dimensional electrophoresis separates proteins based on both isoelectric point and molecular weight in the two dimensions. The advanced form of two dimensional electrophoresis separates proteins in such a way so that different type of artifacts and variations from 2 D E can be overcome by adding different dyes and mix them together in the dyes technology. So, all of this technologies will be discussed in the gel based proteomics. In today's lecture of gel based proteomics, I will give you the concepts of different electrophoresis type for the one dimension electrophoresis and two dimension electrophoresis. During this description of two dimensional electrophoresis, I will give you the workflow of several steps involved in two dimensional electrophoresis. So, let me give you an outline for today's lecture. I will describe about uh, gel based proteomics, how electrophoresis is used, different type of electrophoresis such as one dimensional electrophoresis or SDS page, which is used to separate simple protein mixture, but when you have very complex mixture uh, and you want to separate proteins based on two properties, then you can use two dimensional electrophoresis. I will then describe you the workflow of two dimensional electrophoresis, there are different steps involved and we will walk you through all the steps. Also during the process, I will show you some animations to clarify your concept and some laboratory demonstrations to give you the real feel of the laboratory work being carried for performing the two dimensional electrophoresis. So, there are different steps which are involved in analysis of the proteome. As I talked in the previous lecture that first of all, it is very important to separate the proteins which are present in the sample. Once you have a very good protein preparation made, the next thing is to separate the proteins by involving different techniques. You can use electrophoretic based method such as one dimensional electrophoresis or two dimensional electrophoresis or one can also use different type of chromatography methods to separate the proteins. So, in proteomics you always have various options available to analyze your protein samples. It depends on your applications and the biological questions which you want to ask what information you want to obtain from that particular uh, technique. So, if you want to have just want to verify that your protein is very pure, maybe SDS page electrophoresis is good enough. If you want to determine the subunit compositions, you can compare that on SDS page and native page. 
if you want to resolve the proteins a very very complex mixture of the proteins obtained from whole cell lysate or tissue or the cell and which contains thousands of protein mixture at that time you can try different type of pre fractionation methods by involving different chromatography as well as you can try different type of advanced electrophoretic methods such as two dimensional electrophoresis or dyes one can also use different mass spectrometry based or microarray based technologies to study those proteins during the course you will come across all of these techniques including mass spectrometry and microarrays but let's focus on the electrophoresis in this lecture so the gel based proteomics involves different type of separation techniques which includes sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis or sds page two dimensional gel electrophoresis or 2de the fluorescence 2d difference in gel electrophoresis or dye blue native page or bn page but let me remind you this is not a very descriptive list these are just few very important techniques used for analysis of proteome by applying gels there are different methods as well which have been developed to study the structure and function of the proteins and electrophoresis is very important in that direction which is based on the principle of migration of charged proteins in a given electric field so the very gold standard of these uh, sds page or different type of electrophoretic method is because they have ability to provide the information on the protein structure and properties this is one of the very powerful technique to separate the proteins and visualize the separate protein by applying different type of staining methods let me give you the historical perspective of electrophoresis this process was invented by professor tiselius in 1930 he developed the moving boundary method to study the electrophoresis of proteins since then lot of development happened in the field and during the 1950s and 60s this process was highly adopted in different laboratories so here is uh, dr tiselius who is also known as the father of electrophoresis for his great contribution in chemistry he uh, obtained the nobel prize in 1948 so now we'll describe one dimensional electrophoresis some of the concepts involved in that so the one dimensional electrophoresis the separation is based on the charge to mass ratio and the molecular weight of the protein therefore on a given gel if you have a smaller the proteins in the electric field they will move further down and the higher molecular weight proteins they will remain on the top so if you apply some standard molecular weight markers which gives you the known a uh, molecular weight of the proteins then for a given unknown protein you can determine the molecular weight and it is expected that the higher molecular weight proteins will remain on the top and the smaller molecular weight proteins will reach towards the bottom of the gel so commonly employed one dimensional techniques include the sodium dodecyl sulfate page sds page or other technique which is used for studying the protein in the native conformation native form which is known as native polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis or page the electrophoretic technique can be used for the protein characterization to study different properties for example the subunit composition of the proteins what is the molecular weight of those subunits what is the molecular weight of native proteins 
different type of post translation modifications. Again, only one technique may not be able to answer all of this question. So, often you have to involve more than one type of electrophoretic method. For example, while comparing native and subunit composition forms, you need both native electrophoresis and SDS pitch. If you want to look for post translation modification, then SDS page will be useful. If you want to compare the proteins based on their isoelectric point as well as the separation of isoform or PTM form based on the molecular weight, again two dimensional electrophoresis will be useful. So, one needs to know the concept and the uh, laboratory way of using these techniques, so that by applying a combination of the techniques, one can study different type of properties. However, the one dimensional electrophoresis has different limitations. You cannot separate your complex proteome, the complex protein samples, if you have thousands of protein and you want to study them, then one dimensional electrophoresis has limitations. So, the one dimensional electrophoresis is useful to separate few proteins or a simple protein mixture, but when you are studying the complex mixture, then two dimensional electrophoresis or dye each or with different type of mass spectrometry based methods will be more useful. So, if you have very complex samples like cell lysates or you have serum, then separating those and comparing different type of samples on SDS page may not be a very good way. In that case, you should apply different methods. So, one dimensional electrophoresis is very useful and is being used in almost all the laboratories working in the life science area, but it can give you few questions, it can address only those questions. But if you want to get more characterization, then you have to apply different techniques. So, to overcome these type of limitations and to obtain the better resolution of protein separation, the two dimensional electrophoresis was applied. So, now let us talk about two dimensional electrophoresis or 2 d e. This technique was earlier used in 1970s. So, it has a very long history of being used in laboratories from several years. And interestingly, two scientists, Close and Farrell, they applied two dimensional electrophoresis to study different biological problems and simultaneously they reported independently in 1975 that two dimensional electrophoresis method can be used to separate the proteins based on both molecular weight and isoelectric point. Now, since then two dimensional electrophoresis field has seen many ups and down. For example, several laboratories started using two dimensional electrophoresis it was very easy method to be used and since one can visualize all the protein spots on the gel, it became very attractive way of separating the proteins. So, it was widely adopted, people started using it very often, but when people started comparing the complex samples, complex proteome and for example, you have clinical sample where you have to run may be 20 patient samples and 20 healthy controls. In such a scenario, when you have to run large number of gels, then two dimensional electrophoresis shows lot of variations and reproducibility issues. Therefore, this technique is started getting lot of criticism that there are some reproducibility issues, there are some manual artifacts. Then there were some technical issues inherent to the this concept in the beginning like tube gel. So, all of this were part of uh, the things from 1970s to 1990s and then during that time people started advancing this field by applying new methods such as advancement of immobilized pH gradient strip. Furthermore, then in the race of 
separating proteins in the complex proteomes, people started applying different methods including mass spectrometry based methods. Then questions came that probably due to uh, inherent issues of 2D electrophoresis, this technique may not be a powerful technique to study the proteome. But then advanced form of 2D electrophoresis came such as difference in gel electrophoresis or dyes. So, in this discussion I am trying to convey you the fact that from 1975 till date 2D electrophoresis has seen lot of criticism and appreciation of the technology, but still till date it remains one of the core technology to separate the very complex protein mixtures and thousands of publications are providing a very good evidence for this technology being widely used. So, in the two dimensional electrophoresis the first separation occurs based on the isoelectric point of the proteins and the second dimension occurs based on the molecular weight. In the first dimension separation you can separate the proteins in the isoelectric focusing unit. In the second dimension separation you can separate the proteins in SDS page. I am giving you uh, an overview of this process by showing this figure here where in the first dimension the isoelectric focusing process is occurring by applying immobilized pH gradient strip. Now, in the second dimension the SDS polyacrylamide gel you can place the first dimension separate protein and with the decreasing molecular weight the proteins are separated. So, on the given gel you can separate the proteins based on both molecular weight and isoelectric point. I am showing you an image of two dimensional electrophoresis gels or 2D gel where each spot is representing a protein which is separated in this case from a bacterial sample and each spot already provides you two information about its molecular weight and its isoelectric point. So, two dimensional electrophoresis remains one of the core technology to study the proteome and it is applied in various biological applications. It is relatively very easy technique to handle, it is not so costly, it is still very much affordable. So, different laboratories use it widely. It is a very high sensitive method to visualize the proteins. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, two scientists Close and Farrell independently uh, investigated uh, different problems by applying two dimensional electrophoresis and in 1975 they reported about this method independently. So, Close he was investigating the heterogeneity of mouse lactate dehydrogenase isogenes. Independently O Farrell was studying the complex proteins which are present in the crude extract of E. coli. Here are these two scientists who developed uh, the two dimensional electrophoresis method Professor Patrick O'Farrell and Professor Joy Kim Close. So, they did a great contribution in the field of proteomics and the technology which is still remains one of the core technique in the proteomics field. 2D when it was started in the beginning in 1970s it was not very easy process because protein separation in the first dimension involved casting the polyacrylamide gels containing ampholytes in the glass tubes. Lot of care and attention has to be taken at that time to prepare the tube gels. One of the major concern was the reproducibility of gels to gel. For example, if you want to compare a control and a treatment and you want to analyze those two images, lot of variations were observed by using the tube gel method. So, question is how two dimensional electrophoresis became one of the very powerful method. 
So, various advancements took place in the course of two dimensional electrophoresis. In that optimization and advancement of this technology, different milestone uh, research happened which accelerated the pace of two dimensional electrophoresis research. For example, the development of immobilized pH gradient strip or IPG strip that was one of the major advancement in this field. Solubilization of hydrophobic proteins which were difficult to separate on the gel. Then reproducibility also advanced because of advancement in the gel electrophoretic apparatus and gel casting units. Again lot of companies manufacturers came into the play and they helped to improve the gel casting and electrophoretic units. Different type of staining methods were developed. We will talk about different type of stains and how they work during the course of two dimensional electrophoresis workflow, but very sensitive stains spearhead this process to visualize the proteins on the gel. Finally, how to analyze the images obtained from these gels that was one of the major advancement different type of softwares image analysis tools came into the play to analyze the gels. So, let us talk about immobilized pH gradient strip or the IPG strip which was one of the major milestone development in the 2D e field. So, the development of IPG strip as compared to the tube gel removed lot of inconsistencies which were involved earlier during the process of isoelectric focusing. So, the IPG strips these are computerized computer controlled gradient formation and the pH gradient is covalently incorporated into the acrylamide matrix and it is immobilized there. So, reproducibility of one IPG strip to other IPG strip is very high. Now, they are supplied commercially from different manufacturers and made the 2D process more efficient and it can be compared inter and intra laboratory worldwide because these are computer controlled gradient forms. So, let us talk about some of the advantages of IPG strips over tube gels. The IPG strips are more stable and durable as compared to the tube gel. They provide higher resolution and much better reproducibility for inter or intra laboratory comparison. The higher loading capacity for micro preparative two dimensional electrophoresis is another advantage. Then the separation of basic proteins under the equilibrium conditions. All of these are different advantages of using IPG strips over tube gels. Now, I am introducing you to scientist Professor Angelica Gorge who made a significant contribution for the development of IPG strip. It was her pioneer work in 1990s which eliminated lot of criticism uh, which people were uh, showing due to the reproducibility of gel to gel and along with IPG strip several other advancement occurred in the field which helped to make this technology more reproducible. So, the concentrated protein samples can be applied in the IPG strip without causing gradient degradation which is another advantage of using this method over tube gel. You can take IPG strip and apply your protein sample so that it is absorbed on the strip and then protein can be separated in the electric field based on isoelectric point. So, the IPG strip eliminates several problems which could be associated with the top loading of a carrier ampholyte IEF tube gel which is more sensitive to overloading than the IPG strip. So, people perform 
different type of experiments and depending on the type of problem they want to study, one can apply different type of IPG strip. For example, if you have no clue about what uh, protein range you want to separate based on the pH uh, gradient, then one should start with a broad range of uh, IPG strip for example, 3 to 10. But if you know that you are mainly interested in the uh, physiological pH maybe 4 to 7 could be a better choice where you may lose few protein spots, but your resolution and separation will be much better. Now, if you know your proteins are more rich in acidic region or the basic region depending on those one can separate proteins on the narrower range of the IPG strip. For example, one can use 3 to 6, 4 to 7, 5 to 8 and different type of gel patterns can be observed depending on your IPG strip and the preliminary result obtained then one can apply that to separate the proteins based on IEF the first dimension electrophoresis and SDS page second dimension based on the molecular weight. So, I will now show you uh, an animation for two dimensional electrophoresis which will give you an overview of different steps involved in 2D experiment. So, in this animation I will describe you the two dimensional electrophoresis process. Prior to isoelectric focusing in two dimensional electrophoresis, the commercially available IPG strips must be rehydrated. This process can be done either by the passive rehydration or active rehydration. In passive rehydration, the IPG strip is placed with its gel site downwards in a well containing the protein sample reconstituted with a suitable buffer. As you can see in the animation, you can apply the protein sample and then add the IPG strip so that it can absorb the protein solution. This process can be done for 10 to 20 hours depending upon your length of the IPG strip. This is then covered with mineral oil to prevent the gel from drying up and left overnight. Other process known as active rehydration where the protein sample is added to the strip via a sample cup followed by the cover fluid to prevent the gel from drying up. The protein sample being applied a very low voltage condition is provided and then cover fluid can be added. This is then placed in the isoelectric focusing instrument and low voltage is applied. Process can be performed from 10 to 20 hours. These loaded strips are then focused on an isoelectric focusing unit by passing the current. The various proteins of the sample mixture migrate in the electric field and come to rest when the pH is equal to their isoelectric point or pi. So, they become neutral and are no longer being affected by the electric field. The progress of electrophoresis is monitored by adding a tracking die which you can see in the animation moving ahead of the proteins. The IPG strip is then equilibrated in a reducing agent such as DTT followed by an alkylating agent iodoestamide which prevents reformation of reduced bonds. This is strip containing the separated proteins is then placed on SDS page gel slab for 
further protein separation in the second dimension based on the molecular weight. The proteins on the IPG strip are subjected to SDS page by applying a direct current between 100 to 350 volt depending upon the size of the gel. Any protein that may have been present as a single band on the IPG strip as you can see in the red circle due to similar isoelectric point can then be separated based on the molecular weight where the smaller proteins will migrate the farthest. This is view of a sample gel which has been run by two dimensional electrophoresis and stained with Kumasi blue. Each spot provide the information about the molecular weight and isoelectric point of the protein. So, I hope uh, this animation was clear and you are able to understand the concepts involved in performing a 2D experiment. So, now let me give you a uh, few applications one can use by applying this technique. So, people apply 2D for various objectives. For example, studying the global protein expression. When I say global protein expression, it means you want to identify or separate all the proteins present in a given protein sample. So, if you do not have information about all of the proteins which could be present in your sample mixture, then first of all one need to create that fingerprint or blueprint of all the proteins and use that by the process known as global protein expression. Second thing which is most commonly being used is you want to compare the protein abundance from a given sample to a treatment sample. So, that is known as differential protein expression or also known as abundance based proteomics. You want to look at the proteins which are either going up regulated or down regulated in their expression because of a given treatment or because of a disease condition or because of your experimental condition. So, in both of these cases the two dimensional electrophoresis can be used to resolve the proteins from very complex mixtures. People also use to study different type of isoforms or the post translational modifications which occur in that process. One of the major advantage of this technique is the visual analysis of proteins. When you stain a gel after the two dimensional electrophoresis process, then you can see all the proteins uh, spot on the gel, which is not possible from the gel free approaches such as mass spectrometry. Over there most of your analysis depends on your spectra and you have to rely on your analysis. In this case here your all the protein spots are already present and you can visualize that and then you can use each of these spot to further analyze and compare the images. So, the protein profiling if you want to compare your different sample types from condition A to condition B, you need to solubilize the proteins from the cells and separate all the proteins by applying the pH which is shown here in the first dimension. After that you need to reduce and alkylate your samples and then separate that in the SDS page based on the second dimension molecular weight. Then depending on uh, your staining method being used whether Kumasi brilliant blue or silver stain, different type of fluorescent stains or auto radiography you can visualize the protein spots. Now one can compare these images from condition A to condition B and if there are some proteins which are different in their expression those can be 
the proteins of your interest, one need to analyze that from different type of gels, different replicates, both technical and biological, and then obtain the statistical information for these spot. And if these are significant, then this is the protein of your interest, which you would like to identify by using mass spectrometry. So, I am giving you a view of abundance based proteomics or differential expression profiling, where you can separate the proteins and you can compare the abundance of each spot as shown in the 3D views and then the spot of interest could be trypsinized and it can be identified, the peptide spectra can be generated from mass spec. Now, I am giving you one application example. For example, you want to study the prostate cancer and you have obtained the serum sample from these patients suffering from prostate cancer and you want to compare that with individuals who are healthy. So, both the samples, I will talk about some of the uh, details of the separation in the following uh, 2D workflow and you have also studied different type of protein ex, uh, extraction and depletion of serum in the previous lecture. Now, you can apply those together here that after obtaining the serum sample as you have learned in the last lecture, you can deplete those serum to remove the abundant proteins and then you can separate the proteins on the gel after obtaining different gel images, you can compare and if there are some proteins which are showing difference in the abundance based on up or down regulation and the statistical significance, then these are the spots for further characterization. So, now let us go to the uh, detailed part of each of the uh, processes involved in studying two dimensional electrophoresis, the experimental workflow. The different steps which are involved in making a good gel. So, the first point in that workflow is isoelectric focusing, which is the first dimension separation of the proteins based on isoelectric point. Second step is equilibration of immobilized pH gradient strip. When you are running an SDS pH gel, you make your protein denatured, you want to separate that based on the molecular weight and you heat the samples, you apply different type of denaturant. Now, in this case, when you are doing 2 DE, your first dimension separation has occurred on the uh, IEF in the immobilized pH gradient strip. Now, you want to take these strip and want to apply that on an SDS pH gel, you cannot do the heat treatment. So, you want to make the strips prepared to be separated based on the molecular weight in the second dimension and that is where the equilibration process is useful. Once you have done the equilibration of the strip, then protein can be further separated based on the SDS page. The third point, now fourth in the workflow is staining the gels and visualizing the gel images after staining with different type of stains. Image analysis, the fifth point is very crucial because you need to analyze the, all the protein spots, so that the abundance of each of these proteins can be calculated and more detailed statistical analysis can be performed. Once you are confident that these are the proteins which are highly significant, then you would like to pick those spots by a process mentioned in sixth point, which is spot picking. After that, if you want to identify and know that what this protein is, then you need to do the in-gel digestion or enzymatic digestion of these proteins obtained from the gels. Then the last point will be the mass spectrometry analysis, which will be different uh, series of lectures in the other module based on the mass spectrometry. So, let us talk about the first point isoelectric focusing or IEF. In the IEF process, proteins are separated according to the isoelectric point. You can take the immobilized pH gradient strip and apply the protein solution on the IPG strip, so that 
protein is absorbed on those strip and then after applying the electric field the proteins will migrate according to its charge. When protein is reaching to its isoelectric point where p h becomes equal to its isoelectric point or p i then proteins do not move in the electric field because of the lack of charge. So, when p h equals to p i then protein will not move any further. Let me show you this process in this animation here. You have an IPG strip with p h 3 to 7 gradient. When you are moving in the electric field from the positive charge towards the negative charge, when p h becomes equal to its p i then there is no net charge and protein will uh, remain over there. So, now this will be the isoelectric point. Now, in this view you can see from the low p h to the high p h proteins are moving in the electric field and once they reach to a stage where there is no net charge or p h becomes equals to their isoelectric point p i then these discrete band can be seen. So, the rehydration is one of the important step uh, before applying the electric field in the IEF process as you have seen in the previous animation that to rehydrate the IPG strip you can apply the protein solution on the IPG strips and different methods can be used for this whether passive rehydration where no voltage is applied or active rehydration where you apply the protein sample and a very low voltage is applied to resolve the proteins. Now, we have already discussed that none of these methods can be uh, compared and said as a superior method. One has to really use that in their own uh, uh, biological sample and see where the protein separation can be better based on whether passive rehydration or active rehydration. Once you have done the rehydration process, then one can apply the mineral oil to avoid any protein evaporation from these IPG strips. Now, different type of strips can be used during the IEF process, whether it is pH gradient of 4 to 7 or 3 to 10 or some other pH range as I described in my previous slide depending on your biological question. If you are mainly interested in separating the proteins in their uh, biological pH range then 4 to 7 could be a good choice where you can have better separation of the protein, but you may lose few proteins which could be in the extreme region of acidic and basic. Now, if you want to know all the proteins which could be present in your sample you can apply a very broad range strip like 3 to 10. Now, what type of length of IPG strip should be used? One can use a starting from 7 centimeter till 24 centimeter. There are different type of strips being manufactured from different commercial companies. Now, when you are optimizing a protein extraction protocol, it is better if you use a small strip so that you know that your IEF process is going fine and your protocol is looking good, you can separate the proteins. Now, once you know that your extract is good, then you can apply that to separate the proteins in the long strip length for example, 17 or 24 centimeter. Now, these IEF units or isoelectric focusing units obtained from different vendors commercial manufactured, they are capable of taking the IPG strips of different varying pH length. Few instruments take a flexible length from 7 to 24 centimeter, other commercial instruments they are able to take different type of trays designed for each type of uh, strip length. Now, depending on uh, your proteins, how much protein sample you have in your uh, protein in the sample mixture, uh, it is always better or good idea to resolve that on the very large 
gels for example, 18 or 24 should be a better choice, but if you do not have enough protein to separate then you have to restrict yourself to a smaller strips or one can still go with a large strip, but apply different more sensitive strain. So, when we will talk about different type of staining methods at that time we will talk even if you have low protein you can separate on the largest, but then apply more sensitive stain such as silver or cypro ruby. But overall the large gels are recommended for doing any type of differential proteomic analysis when you want to compare your controls and treatment spot. But handling the large gel is very tedious. So, I will show you some lab demonstration the video for that, so that you can be well prepared to perform these experiments in your lab. These are some recommendation for how much protein one should load on the IPG strips. For example, uh, if you have a small strip like 7 centimeter length, you can apply between 100 to 300 microgram of protein and maximum volume could be 150 to 160 microliters. Usually Kumasi stain is a good choice and if you have Kumasi stain you can stain that with this much protein. If your protein sample is having very less amount of protein for example, 10 to 100 microgram at that time you have to apply the sensitive stains such as silver or cypro ruby. One can also apply the large strip like 17 centimeter or 24 centimeter strip, but then you have to increase the protein amount to be loaded and separated on the IPG strip. For example, between 250 to 1000 microgram of protein can be loaded on the large strip and one can visualize that by using Kumasi stain. Total reaction volume should not be more than 350 microliters. But if you do not have too much protein present in your sample, then still you can apply this method, you can apply the large strip, but then you have to stain with silver or cypro ruby. In that case, you can load between 100 to 100 th to 1000 microgram of protein. So, I will give you the laboratory demonstration of isoelectric focusing, so that you can be very clear about different intricate steps involved in performing IEF. Isoelectric focusing. This process involves two major steps, rehydration of the IPG strips and focusing of the rehydrated strips. IPG strip rehydration. Clean all the apparatus thoroughly before use to avoid any contamination. Add the reconstituted protein sample in a well of the rehydration tray. Then remove the IPG strip from its cover and place it carefully in the well. IPG strips are used for separation of proteins based on their isoelectric point. These are acrylamide coated plastic strips containing immobilins of various pH spread across it. They have successfully replaced conventional tube gels due to their reproducibility they can achieve. After around 30 minutes, pour some mineral oil over the strip to prevent it from drying up. Cover the tray and leave it overnight to allow rehydration to occur. Isoelectric focusing. Initialize the instrument and clean the surface well with a dust free cloth.
place the focusing tray on the instrument and ensure that it is properly balanced. Cut the paper wicks required for focusing to a suitable length and wet them with a small amount of water before use. Carefully remove the IPG strip from the rehydration tray and drain out any excess oil by blotting it on a tissue paper. Place the strip in the focusing tray and immerse it with mineral oil. Then place the two wicks at either end of the IPG strip followed by an electrode at each end. Fill all the adjacent wells with mineral oil to ensure uniform current flow. Then input the desired protocol on the instrument software along with details of strip length, pH range and number of strips and start the focusing process. The voltage time curve will appear based on the protocol that has been set. Protein separation occurs on the basis of net charge of the pro protein. Proteins will migrate along the strip and come to rest at a point when their net charge becomes zero known as their isoelectric point. So in summary, in today's lecture uh, we have discussed about uh, gel based proteomics different type of techniques being used in gel based proteomic process. We have talked about different type of electrophoresis methods being used including SDS page and two dimensional electrophoresis. Then we started discussing about the details of 2 D electrophoresis process and I have given you the workflow. In that workflow we talked about isoelectric focusing or IEF process in more detail. You have seen animation for 2D electrophoresis process as well as the laboratory demonstration of IEF process. I hope by now you are clear that what are different type of technique being used in gel based proteomics and what are different workflow steps involved in performing this process. We will continue our next lecture on the 2D workflow and we will study about the next steps including the equilibration of strips, SDS page, staining gels, obtaining image, analysis of those images, spot picking etcetera. Thank you.